Hello, everybody. So tonight, I just want to talk to you guys about, uh, I just want to have a conversation, you know what I'm saying? Just want to kind of talk to my audience. I'm going to give it a while, let everybody pour in and tune in. They're pouring in, they're pouring in. Um, I just want to talk to you guys about being chosen and how nowadays it seems like everybody and their mamas and their aunties want to be chosen. Um, so we're going to talk about that tonight. Let me get my coffee. Funny, I can't find my coffee mug, can I? Well, I tell you, where's a coffee mug when you need one? Where's a coffee mug? Oh, child, I can't find my coffee mug, can I? I found, okay. All right, all right. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay, how you? Hey! Chitty, <laughs> I forgot to call y'all Resurrection Sunday. What's up, Chitty? I'm talking about. I'm just gonna talk, have a conversation to everybody that's gonna tune in, and then everybody that's gonna watch. How are you, Chitty? What's up? Type it in the comment right there. All right, so I got my coffee, everybody. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So tonight, I just want to talk to y'all about being show Happy Resurrection Sunday, my friend. What's good, Chitty? Hi, Chitty. Um, I just want to talk to the people. Good. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm good, Chitty. I'm just in this training process, trying to lose weight. Nothing major, nothing big. Uh, just chilling because my class don't start till July, like I told you. So I'm just going to talk. I'm going to do some, you know, just some spiritual talk tonight, just a conversation. So I'm just going to, you know, get into that. Um, thank God for my friend Chitty here, y'all. It's been such a long time since I had that much fun. I have not had that much fun, like I told y'all, since I was a kid with my cousins. So Chitty was a blessing to me. Chitty and Philly. Jewel Monet. That is so pretty. All right. So tonight I'm going to talk to y'all about being chosen and how everybody wants to be chosen. I just want to have a conversation with you guys, really, because it seems these days people think that just because they're chosen or they have an anointing from God, that gives them an excuse to live any kind of way to stay in sin because they have an anointing, because they know they can preach or because they know they can sing. And let's just bring this fact out. Just because one is gifted and or talented does not necessarily mean there is an anointing that accompanies that gift or talent anybody can sing and blow the roof off of the house off of the church house or the clubhouse and not be anointed um and anybody can preach and think of a sermon and come up with this and people can be like oh man you're really that doesn't mean they're anointed um anointing can only be given by god he also gives people their talents and all that but the anointing and the holy spirit the power of the holy ghost is what truly destroys the yokes and this is why i want to talk about this on today because i feel like a lot of times especially in these days just looking at our leaders, whether they're gospel musicians or they're gospel pastors or they're evangelists, preachers, or just, um, you know, people that have been in the grown, grown up in church most of the time, they feel like because they're chosen, that then gives them a right when they kind of start to slip or backslide to be like, I'm chosen, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, I, you can't tell me nothing. I, I'm chosen. My my dad preached. My mom preached. My family has their own church. I've been anointed. This is our legacy. So if they, they then feel like if they start to fall into fornication, they start to find, fall into a, adultery, um, or if they start start to fall in, what's that word? A uh, pride, uh, talking to people any kind of way, dressing any kind of way, forgetting that God holds those who are in the spotlight that represent him to a certain standard. When you are a preacher or a minister of the gospel, whether you are an evangelist, a deacon, a, a, a prophetess, a gospel musician, God is watching our lives. He's watching the standard. He's watching how we talk. He's watching how we dress, how we sing. He's watching every move we make because we are saying that we represent the most high 
We can't do that any kind of way. We can't dress, talk, and walk like the world and say, oh, I'm representing Jesus Christ, but you're cussing people out, but your breasts are all out, but your clothes are too short, you're dressing like the world, you're sounding like the world, but your life and your fruits are not adding up, but you're doing things in public p- places that don't add up to the word of God. Matter of fact, they're contrary to the word of God. The, the things that you're doing are an abomination to the word of God, or you're saying it's okay to fornicate, you're saying blah, 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 blah. If you're saying that these things are okay and they are against God, you are going to be held accountable for that. And you cannot let the fact that you think, oh, I'm chosen. I can get away with it. You can't let that or let that notion let you just continue in sin because that is deceivement from the pit. Um, oh, this is the main point. This is the main point I want to get people to understand. Chosen people are in hell too. Chosen people are in hell too. Why? Because the Bible says quench not the Holy Spirit. Um, it comes a point where if you keep quenching the Holy Spirit, quenching the Holy Spirit, he's going to withdraw because you're rejecting him. You're dis- so You know how many pastors ended up in hell because they died in adultery. They died in lust. They died in for And God kept telling them, or maybe they got greedy and started stealing money out the church and they, and they, or they started getting uh, jelly back in the church and stopped preaching the gospel, gospel and start preaching anything goes to get more people, to get more fame. Do you know how many pastors are in hell because of these different reasons? And they thought because they were chosen, the anointed of God that they could get away with it but God sits high and looks down low and he's not to be mocked his word says he's not to be mocked chosen people go to hell too everybody's talking about being chosen these days I see all these celebrities the chosen one oh baby you chosen chosen people will bust hell wide open if they don't stop playing with God and live holy he said be ye holy for i am holy again god is not to be mocked just because you have a calling on your life or you are chosen does not mean that you are exempt from the wrath of god that's what i'm trying to say does not mean he loves you but he's given us warnings he, if you have the holy spirit he's going to be condemning you if you're talking if you're dressing a certain way if you're dipping and dabbling in sin he's going to be condemning you you need to stop that you're my child i love you it's people looking up to you to to, to know that right life to live it's babes in christ you have to you have to make sure that you pray that you fast um that you're walking right before god so that you're not a stumbling block to those babes in christ and to those people that look up to you because we know we're imperfect but we can't use that as an excuse to continue in sin and be like oh i'm chosen i'm going to continue you know fornicate continue dressing worldly even though god is telling me to get it together continue on this path because i'm the chosen of god i'm the anointed of god you know in the bible it specifically talks to that it says if solomon the wisest give us some bible whatever you do it for the glory of god i know i didn't feel like doing that today but here is some bible i'm not going to give the the uh the scripture reference just google it because i don't feel like all that what's up ali um okay here's some bible the bible talks about solomon um and it says that in the end His heart was not right with God. Just Google that. Uh, Solomon was the wisest man in the world, but he also had so many concubines and so many wives. He was full of the Holy Spirit, very wise at first. He had a heart for God. He built the temple. David couldn't build it because his hands was too bloody. He had too many people killed and all this. So God said, you're not going to build it. Your son's going to build it. But... In the end, his heart wasn't right with God because females were Solomon's downfall. Lust. It said he started building idols for them. Uh, it, it talks about him in the what is the book of uh, oh gosh, is it Chronicles of Kings? Uh, and just look at look in the Bible. Now look, I don't forgot, but I know the word. Look, I know the word. I don't know the the references, but I just be remembering the word word. But it says in the Bible, it warns us. It says if the wisest man in the world can fall, meaning fall from grace, then so can we. Google those words. If the wisest man can fall so can we it also talks about saul saul was the anointed of god and saul was chosen okay come on talk to the chosen people because the chosen people get a little too arrogant and they feel like well i can continue in fornication i can continue in adultery my mama called them pentecostal playboys they save and they preach and they be sleeping around Uh uh-huh all up in the church but god is not for that uh they oh i'm chosen i can keep sleeping around i'm anointed can't nobody out preach up in the paw like me can't nobody out preaching the upi and the uh where the crowd like me but god is watching so chosen people can go to hell too it said so saul was the anointed of god but saul lost his favor in god's sight um because his heart began to not be right in god's sight he began to grow jealous of david and he got took back his like he took back his his um 
his love for Saul. He Saul fell from grace and he was chosen. I say this because chosen people feel like they're exempt from the wrath of God or from falling from grace, from losing salvation. And you are not. Matter of fact, chosen people will be tortured more in hell if they play with God. So it is serious to be. You know how many chosen people are in hell? You know how many celebrities were chosen and are dead now? Most of them died young because they were chosen. And you go, well, what's the difference between this one and that one? This one is chosen. They were very special. That's why the wrath of God hit them because they went against God's plan for their life. Let's talk about it. Now, I'm not going to get into all that. Saul was the anointed of God, but he left. God took his, uh, his, 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 um, what did he say? God said, I will not take my, I don't remember the exact words, but I will not take my favor from you. He told David this, like I took from Saul. He said, if your kids send David, I'm going to hold it against them, but I'm not going to remove my hand uh, from your household because God had promised to bless David and that his his seed, God's seed, would come through David, which he did. So God had mercy on the house of David because of that covenant he made with David. He said, if your children sin, I'm going to hold it against them, but I'm not going to take my hand and my grace off of you and your descendants because of the covenant I made with you. But he took it off of Saul. Saul's heart began to grow jealous of David. He began to seek witchcraft and all these things that are against God so we have to know that just because one is chosen does not mean you cannot fall from grace does not mean God you are exempt from God's wrath like I have uh, said for the fourth time and that other scripture there is a scripture in the Bible it's either pertaining to Saul or it's pertaining to Solomon. I believe it's Solomon. It says if the wisest man in the world can fall. Or it could have been talking about Saul. Because Saul fell from grace too. He he actually committed suicide as well. He had his armor bearer kill him. So that's still committing suicide. He said take your sword and kill me. Um, but he said if the wisest person in the world can fall. Um. How much more we? It's telling us we don't. We're not even the wisest. You know how full of the Holy Spirit Solomon was at first. How wise he was at first before all he let all these women and lusts and start building them false idols and false temples. And it says in the end his heart was not right with God. It says that at the end, and I personally, it's my personal opinion that he did not make it to heaven. It's my personal opinion that he fell from grace because his heart was not right with God. And we know that the Bible says only the pure in heart can see God. Um. Uh, holiness and without no man shall see him and and Solomon fell away from holiness and so did Saul okay um so that's just a few references now I don't know the exact scriptures but when I get off of here I can google them and y'all can too and find the exact scriptures so the child won't think I'm just making up stuff because I be knowing the word but I don't be knowing the scriptures and stuff like that I knew I was gonna get on here but I just wanted to talk like I didn't want to have to be looking all in the bible and all that um but I guess I should have did that but I mean if I go to it right now I'm not gonna know like the exact scripture to go through um but like I said it's in there it says if the wisest man or something like that in the world could fall uh be not deceived so can we um and also God took his favor away from Saul and Saul was chosen so chosen people you cannot take the love of God for granted the Bible also says that favor is deceitful and be, it says beauty is vain and favor is deceitful but a woman that fears the lord shall be praised i want to look at the part that says favor is deceitful and i believe that's in the book of proverbs i think it may be around proverbs somewhere in there with the virtues when proverbs 31 or before that it's in there somewhere um but i want to look at the part where it says favor is deceitful because a lot of people also feel like because they're favored of God that they don't have to go through certain tribulations that they don't have to go through certain trials that they're supposed to have a nice easy breezy life when in fact it's the opposite because the hand of God is on whoever that person is whoever has that true anointing of God you may go through some more persecution you are going to be tested in the fire to see if you're worthy of this it's, it says in the Bible this race is not given to the swift or the strong but to those who endure to the end it says those who endure to the end shall be saved so um um, I see so many chosen. I don't, hmm. I see one person in my head particular. Um, and it happens a lot. Like I said, with chosen people, everybody just wants to be chosen. They want the glitz and the glam. They want the, the part where we just get dressed up and get on camera like this. Nobody wants the part where we look in a hot mess and people are treating us wrong and we're homeless. Nobody wants the struggle that came with being chosen. Nobody wants the pain that comes with the anointing. Nobody wants the heels that you have to go through before you're standing in front of the podium and getting the glitz of preaching the gospel or ministering because you've gone through this. Now God is, this is why you went through it because this is your podium in Christ. 
he has calling you to this ministry. He's calling you to be a prophet, an evangelist, a preacher's wife. Nobody wants that part. Nobody wants a Zakira that was sleeping at the airport alone. The Zakira that was looking jacked up, sleeping on the side of the street. They just want this glitz part. Oh yeah, she's anointed. Oh yeah, brother David's anointed. Oh yeah, brother Joe's anointed. Look at him with the wife and the kids. But when brother David was on the side of the street asking for two dollars, people was looking at him funny, judging him, talking about he's not a man. Why are you out here? What did you do to be out here? You don't know somebody's story. Everybody wants the glitz and the glamour being chosen, but they don't understand what's behind it. Not just what you have to go through, but God is tender hearted. He um he's sensitive to his his children, but it, he's also sensitive in the fact that he don't want you to play with him. He wants you to put him first and he's jealous. God is a jealous God and that's in the Bible. And all this stuff I'm saying is in the Bible. He said, you ought to put no other God before me. He's jealous for his bride. And we as his children, especially, look at this now. The Bible says many are called. Everybody's called to the supper of the Lamb. Everybody got the invitation, accept Jesus, be born again, go to heaven. But few are chosen. It says many are called, but few are chosen. Only a select few are really stamped and chosen. Here's the scary thing about being chosen. When you are chosen by God and you deliberately, continually go against the will of God, he will take you out unless he decides to have mercy on you. Because the Bible also says, God says, I will have mercy on who I choose to. But most of the time when you are chosen by God and he's trying to get your attention because, hey, I called you to be a preacher. Um, hey, I know you're a rapper. I know you're a singer, blah, 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 blah. But that's, that's not what I called you to do for your gift. I called you to preach. I, I, I gave you those good looks and I gave you that charisma because I wanted you to preach to the hood. Because I wanted you to use that gift to bring them in from the hood. Because I knew they would listen to you because you share the same story. But you're going against what I'm saying. And you've been doing this for some time now. But I'm trying to get your attention because I love you and I don't want you to go to hell. But if you keep on disobeying me, I didn't make you this special to just keep influencing them wrong. I will take you. And that's that's his that's his heart toward the chosen. He loves us. He wants us to do his will. But if you're chosen, it's a dangerous thing is what people don't understand. If you're chosen and you deliberately go deliberately continue to go against the hand of God on your life because he's trying to call you out of sin. He will take you out of here. You will die before your time. That is why a lot of celebrities are, di- are dead right now. Sam Cooke, Aaliyah, Tupac. A lot of these people were chosen, but they went against God because the celebrity went to their head, blah, blah, blah. They got Leah got involved in the dark side, blah, blah, blah. And he was, he, he was trying to call them out all the while. But they, they were lost in sin, fame, and all this other stuff. Yeah, we know just because people have a relationship and talk about God, look at their fruits. Look at what they're singing about. Look at what they're doing, their fruits. What did they do just before they, they died? What did they do? Well, how you know they didn't go to heaven? It ain't about no uh, no deathbed. Uh, what do you call it? Deathbed repentance. It's about your heart. Yo, right in the second you die, your heart going to be the same it was basically uh, like a week or something. It ain't going to just oh, be, oh, I'm a big sinner, but now I'm finna die. Oh, Lord, forgive me so you can go to heaven. It don't work like that. I'm sorry, people. It don't work like that. Your heart is still the same. When people go to hell, their heart is still the same. Whatever they was, if they was a thief, they was a prostitute, they still that way in hell. You don't just change because you finna die. Oh, Lord, forgive me. And now I'm a saint. Oh, yeah, I made it to heaven. Don't work like that. Whatever you are, in the moment you gone, that's how your heart was. So if you was a sinner, you was a sinner. If you were saint, you were saint. Now he had mercy on the people on the cross. Because that's he can do what he wanted. He had mercy on them. He was a sinner. He was on the cross. But the Bible says, unless a man is born again of the water and spirit, he can't enter heaven. Now, I'm not God. So I don't know the end of it. I'm not saying I know these things like uh, I'm, this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I know who, you know, for sure, for sure. But I know based on the Bible, he said, I'll have mercy on who I choose. He had mercy on the thief on the cross. So he accepted him in the kingdom and he also humbled himself and he was with Jesus right there. So he had, he said, Lord, remember me. And God forgave him of his sins in that moment. But we cannot just count on some bedside. We can't just expect to live a life of sin. And then you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know if you're going to get into a car accident. You just got out of fornication, adultery and all this other sin. And then like oh lord forgive me y'all it don't work like that it's based upon your heart if your heart's still a cheater if your heart's still a homosexual if your heart's still adulterer if your heart's still a, a a murderer if your heart's still a sin is sin it ain't got to be no big sin sin is sin period if your heart is still in sin when you die it don't work like oh i'm a sinner oh i'm about to get in the car. you ain't even gonna know when you finna die unless you were like in a hospital bed or something then you got maybe more time to be like father you know then that's different but otherwise than that somebody shoot you you get in a car accident you have a heart attack you don't know you're gonna die so we need to get right with god now 
So I'm just talking about the chosen for everybody just tuning in. Hi, Mother Lee. Uh, for anybody just tuning in, I'm just talking about the deceivement these days of those that are chosen who are truly chosen because everybody claims to be chosen is not chosen. Everybody wants to be chosen. I'm going to tell you why you don't want to be chosen. Because if you are chosen, like I said, and you play with God and you do not answer to the call on God's on the call of the oil of the anointing that he has placed on your life and that he wants to pour on you because if you're chosen as a special anointing God wants to work through you if you don't answer that he will take you out because he's jealous for you because you're chosen many are called but few are chosen my mother said uh, my mother said when she was a backslider she said that God told her he said, either you're going to serve me, or you're going to go to hell. She said, but Lord, I don't have the mind to serve you. She said, but if you give me the mind to serve you, I will serve you. She said, he gave her the mind and she served him. Um, I say that because y'all don't understand that when you chosen, it's a scary thing. It's a scary thing to fall into the wrath of God because you playing with him. Oh, I'm chosen. They're not going to know that um, I'm in adultery. They're not going to know that I slipped over to the other side and I'm doing abominable acts because I preach so good. Because it's still flowing. They can't tell him in sin because look, look, I can preach his message. They won't even know what I'm doing because that's how well I'm preaching because that's how anointed I am. Don't play with God. It's a tricky thing. It's a dangerous thing to play with the anointing of God and to play with being chosen and to, and to allow you to think that just because you are chosen you can continue in sin whether that's dressing like the world talking like the world continually go against the hand of God when he's warning you to come out of something again there are plenty of chosen people in hell sadly plenty of chosen people in hell okay when God is calling us out we need to listen so most of you you ought to be glad that you're not chosen many are called but few are chosen he's calling everybody in. he wants everybody to be born again but he's jealous for the chosen they have a special anointing they have something special on them that he wanted to do uh only through that chosen person many are called few are chosen but it's a dangerous thing to go against the hand of God when he's correcting the chosen when they're slipping in sin because they think, oh, nobody will notice. I preach good. I sing good. Look how good I sing. Look how good I preach. They don't even know what I'm doing behind closed doors. I'm the anointed of God. He wouldn't. God wouldn't get me. He may be y'all, but not me. Look how many fans I got. Look how many people. Look Look how what I did for his kingdom. Look how I fed this neighborhood. Look how I gave to Israel. I did all these things he told me to do. He won't care about this, this little affair I'm having on my wife. He won't care that I'm slipping back over here and doing this. and that. They don't even know. Look how good i preach look how i make his people move they don't even see what i'm doing but god sees it so we have to be careful everybody wants to be chosen nobody wants to go through what the chosen have to go through and you don't understand how you don't understand how tricky it is being chosen when i say tricky it is a complicated thing because if you are chosen and you just decide like what most people do i'm gonna live my life the way i want to live your life he gonna give you some time give you some time and then you're going to be like, no, I'm, I'm good, Lord. I know you kind of got this call on my life. No, you ain't just call. You chosen. It's it's bigger than that. It ain't just a calling. You chosen. Uh, uh, okay, I'm good. Oh, he, I know he sent this person to tell me. Oh, man, he sent somebody else. And I'm still doing my thing. I'm still doing. Man, he said, I know he got something for me to do, but I'm not even going to try to see him. I'm good. I'm good. And you're going to be like, look, I gave you chance at chance. Boom. Because you're chosen. Y'all understand? It's a serious thing to be chosen and to go against uh, God's special oil on your life because it's bigger than a calling when you're chosen this special anointing that he wants you to do for his kingdom something special that only you can do that nobody else can do and when you go against that and you continue deliberately go against god and him trying to call you out of sin he will take you out of here if you're chosen and you just say i'm not going to serve him so i'd be glad you ought to be glad that you're not chosen a lot of people think they are chosen are not chosen some people know they are chosen and they kind of get in this thing where they kind of start looking like the world, sounding like the world, um, pray for the gospel artists because a lot of them are falling into this or some of them, uh, pray for them, please pray for them because the anointing is a rare thing just because anybody can sing, anybody can blow the roof off, but the anointing is what destroys the yoke. And I remember one artist in particular, I was trying to get close to God and get a refilling of the spirit and I was listening to her and the anointing was so great on her pray for her um she was like she 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 is um a blessing but i can see that in right now she needs prayer nobody's too far all they got to do is be like lord am i doing anything wrong show me he'll wheel them back in all right 
for me too whenever i trip because we human whenever we start kind of looking and blending more like the world and we had this special anointing on us that's rare the anointing is a special thing it sets you apart from the world this young lady was seeing gospel and she was set apart and she looked modest and she looked holy um so we got to keep praying for our gospel musicians and our pastors and our leaders we have to pray for them don't think because you're chosen it's okay for you to blend in with the world to start going with the world to start sinning or keeping sin god is seeing and he wants you to do to seek him to put him first and to do his will and not to get caught up in the ways of the world in the ways of celebrityism in the ways of what looks and feels good but more so in being holy and setting the standard and being an example of what god calls a woman of god and a man of god and he wants you to be an example so that sinners can be like man it's something different about her i need to come out of sin i need to be like her or man it's something different about him he's from the same hood i've, I've been to and i remember how he used to be but i don't want to be like him or vice versa it's something different about him i know he's a church boy and maybe he ain't been through exactly what i've been through but that light that joy he has i want that man i really need to give my life to jesus i really need to talk to him it can go both ways and that's what god wants with his chosen it's it's a special oil on the chosen that not just anybody carries and it's a dangerous thing when we deliberately continue in sin and we think oh because we're chosen we're we're exempt from the wrath of god no it's more it says it's greater to he that knew the sin and continued in it it said greater is would his damnation be it says that in like two different two different verses i'm mixing them up but it's um yeah, for those who know sin and do it anyway, it is sin. And uh, it says for those who've known better, they'll get many stripes. Uh, so it's not a light thing to be chosen and to just think you can just wiggle your way in sin because you're anointed or because you preach well or because you sing well. No, he has all in your life for a reason. You're supposed to not only preach the word, but live what you preach. Not only sing the word, but live what you preach. And the thing that God adores that is like roses to his nostrils is a lifestyle of hope holiness it is not a cult it's not a clique it's not kojic it's not apostolic it can be non-denominational it can be baptist as long as it's a bible-based church but it's a lifestyle led by the holy spirit that any true born-again believer can be filled with and um god can lead them in that lifestyle that's a lifestyle that is a straight and narrow that he would call all of his children into that is what smells like roses them holiness so when it comes to the chosen he wants them to live that lifestyle only by his holy spirit yes we know our righteousness is filthy rag yes we know nobody's perfect but he said to strive to be he said be ye perfect as i am perfect be ye holy as your heavenly father is perfect There's so many scriptures on holiness so he's calling us to strive and if you if anything you really want you're going to go after it if you really want that job at the mall if you really want to work for bet if you really want it, you're going to go after you're going to pursue it it's the same thing with god if you want to please god you're going to seek him you're going to read your bible you want to pray you're going to fast don't compare it to anybody else's just ask god to lead you in how to pray and how to fast ask him what do you do and uh, ask him to lead you and give you the understanding and the knowledge of his word whatever version of his word you got to read whether it's the new international version whatever as long as it's the word of god and ask him to just lead you um into a lifestyle of holiness because i don't care what the world says the world say oh yeah it don't take all that Oh, it don't take all that because he died for my sins so i mean i might mess up tonight i might mess up again tomorrow and that's fine because he died for my sins if you unintentionally mess up yes there's grace but if you just planning and living in that life of sin and you like oh i'm good i'm good he died for my sins or yeah blank 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 i'm good because i know he died that's not the right attitude that will lead you to hell you got to humble yourself and say lord save me and that doesn't mean i'm any better than anybody else it doesn't mean that i'm a cup of crystal and everybody else is a, a piece of dirt project uh uh mud it means that i recognize my new identity in christ and i can't do and say what i used to say i can still reach people i can say hey what's up you know but y'all y'all maybe y'all want to come to church or i might can have a decent conversation with them and know how far to go and what i can and what i can't do but i know my identity in christ to recognize when it's time to exit when it's time to leave because god is calling me to greater now he's calling me to my destiny he's calling me to heaven and to escape the door of hell he said go for it, snatching him out the fire so um church chosen you need to know that the that the that the wrath of god is will be heavier on you if you continue in sin and think that because you're chosen you ain't gonna have no consequences you you won't go to hell because you're chosen you know it's, it's a lot of chosen people in hell 
There's some biblical chosen people in hell. And it's people from these days that were chosen that have missed God's grace because of their sin and been tricked by the enemy uh, for the, what is it, the pride of life, the, all the different stuff, and have missed God. And the, some of them love God. They died in sin uh, without putting him first. They got distracted. And then one day, boom car crash one day boom somebody shot him one day boom they died in adultery and the, the spouse fell down and shot him god was saying i'll forgive you turn around stop doing that blah 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 and they no no i'm gonna keep doing it one day the husband come home found the pastor with the wife and shot the pastor pasta in hell uh-huh pasta deacon brother tree tree doesn't matter if it's tree three if i'm just <laughs> y'all don't take it for granted jesus loves us whether we're chosen or not but you need to know you need to know this because you chosen don't mean you can't go to hell. Does not mean you can't go to hell. Does not mean you can't go to hell. So don't play with it. Um, take it as a serious matter. A serious, a very serious matter to be the chosen of God. And not only that, but to be a child of God. Don't take that for granted. The grace of God. Thinking, oh, well, he died for my sins. I can do whatever and still go to heaven. Don't take that for granted. God bless y'all. I just want to talk about the chosen tonight. And again, the scriptures are uh, many or few, uh, many are called, but few are chosen. The other scripture says, if I think it was, if the wisest man in the world could fall, be ye not deceived, how, how much more can you guys? So that means we need to take hold to God's word, take uh, hold of prayer and fast. And we can't be deceived by lust what got solomon was lust them, them females was beautiful he started building idols for them i think building temples look in the word um was it chronicles was it kings it's in there just google it another scripture it said god told david and i will not take my favor from you something along those words like i took from saul so these are all in the word and saul was a chosen okay and then saul committed suicide and he went to hell thou shalt not murder he murdered himself so this is i'm taking i'm talking this stuff from the word child i just want to talk to y'all i didn't want to have to get out the bible tonight but just google it and you'll pop up this is bible so be ye not deceived chosen people can go to hell too and it will be greater wrath for them because he had a special oil we need to all strive for holiness God wants us to be holy. He wants us to be set apart. He wants us to come out of sin. You don't have to grow up in the church. You don't have to be a goody two shoes. Um, you don't have to worry about is there a ghetto in heaven? You don't have to think, oh, this is so boring. He will meet you where you're at and he will create the kingdom person in you that he born you into this world to be. Because your mother and your father, they, they just was the vessels he used. Regardless of how they got it, could have been raped, fornication. Whenever he sends his spirit, he got an assignment for that spirit. So he, he's calling us out of sin. Chosen, don't play with it. It's a special oil on your life to lead sinners to Christ and to help the saints understand what more we must do to please a holy God and to go for snatching them out the fire. He loves y'all. Thanks for tuning in, Allie. I miss you. Love you, pretty girl. Bye, Chitty. Bye, Mother Lee. Pray for me. Tell the saints to pray for me. I definitely need it. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.